And you that are watching by the way of television, YouTube, Internet, Facebook, Instagram, Rooker, whatever, I put a challenge out there this day. That challenge is, is to try God. You may have just turned on that switch. And you may be so far lost and gone that you think there's no hope for you, but I want to tell you today that God is still on the throne. I pointed this out last week. In the book of Acts, there is no amen to the book of Acts. That's the reason why you can still be added to the church. Today is the day that God can take your world and change it and show you how much love He has for you. All you have to do is sit down and write me a letter. Send it to the post office box that's on there. Don't send it to my church. Send it to me. I'll personally read it and pray over it. And I'll tell you right now, I believe that when I pray over it, God hears me and God answers prayer. I don't play games when it comes to prayer. I don't play games when it comes to uh, playing church. I believe if you're sick, the Bible says, call for the elders of the church, anoint their head with oil, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise you up again. If you want God to do something for you, reach out to Him. Reach out and say, Pastor Bob, I happen to tune in your service today, and I believe that you can pray for me, and I believe that God can help me. You don't have to send me no money. If you want to, that's fine. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to see people blessed and healed and delivered. I want to talk about a subject that I read several, I'll say four or five years ago. The Lord took me into the 25th chapter of Matthews. And something that he revealed to me in there, and hopefully that I can relate this to you to understand. How many in here saved? Anybody in here not saved, raise your hand. So everybody's saved. So this particular scripture that I'm going to be talking about is talking to us as a believer. Do you remember the day that God tugged on your heart and you got saved or you went to an altar and got saved or down on your knees at your bedside or whenever it was, you got saved? That was the beginning of a journey that we all take. Some of us go through valleys, mountaintops, valleys, down just hard, hard times, hard roads, uh, hurts, pains, and disasters, sickness, and, and uh, struggling for money, finances, and everything. It's part of a journey. It seemed like we just kind of glide through it, but at the same token, we're going through a situation in our lives, and, and we look around, and we see other people in worse shape than we are, and yet we still complain. And that's sad because... Um, we had a lady here, was it two weeks, two weeks ago, the one that they were going to cut her foot off? Was that two weeks ago? Anyway, they were, they were talking about cutting her foot off. And um, I, pray, I prayed for her and also poured the water on her. I took the water and blessed it and poured the water on it. And she, she went dancing around and everything else. Okay? But you that were in here, you didn't have that situation. You didn't have that problem. And that would have been a time for you to get excited over that woman's blessing and miracle. Because there may come a time that you will be in a a situation that you'll need some support and backing and prayer and and so forth. The lady who was, somebody was talking about the lady that had 26 surgeries, Mark, is that you? 21 surgeries? Can you imagine 21 surgeries and the doctors couldn't do anything and in five minutes God did it? And, and she became an instant boxer. You notice I had her left hand and she was swinging that right one at me, man? <laughs> I thought Muhammad Ali was in front of me. But the funny part about it is, is she came, she got what she wanted. And that's what you go to church for is to go and get refueled every week. You should get something out of the service, especially if it's a service where the Spirit of God is. And I don't know about you, but I have been in some churches that were deader than a funeral home. 
And it's sad because they, they got everything that portrays to be Christian. They got cross hanging up, they got pictures of the so-called Jesus, and, and they got a beautiful choir and, and, and all kinds of stuff, and they're deader than, than a doornail. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, you are at liberty to receive. Whatever you come for, whatever you want God to do, you're at liberty to receive it. But it takes faith. It takes faith to move God, and you can't do it with mouth service. You've got to do it with a with a heart service, knowing oh, buddy. a heart service, knowing that when you ask God, God hears you. How many knows that God hears you when you pray? You haven't heard God talk to you or get back with you on what you prayed for. Every one of your hands should have gone up. Because sometimes it takes time for God to answer the prayer. Amen. It's not your time to receive whatever God has planned for you. Anyway, in the 25th chapter, man started out in the very first um, verse. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, if you have the Spirit of God, let me explain what that verse says, virgin. We all know that as a, as a, as a grown-up, what it means. But what it means here is that you have had a born-again experience with God. So now you're going to make a change. You're going to go from the old corrupted man, and now you're going to start on this journey as a brand-new babe in Christ. Pure heart, pure soul, pure everything. Doesn't mean that all your past is going to go away. It's going to haunt you to the day you die because Satan is going to remind you day after day after day after day how many times you have made a mistake and that God has lost your number, that God doesn't love you, that you're going to be broke all your life, you're going to inherit the diseases of your generations up that had cancer and sugar diabetes and arthritis and all this other junk. But it blocks it when you get saved. It starts a new life for you. Why do some people go to church when they just feel like it? Why do they go to church when they need something? Why don't they go to church just to be part of the praise and worship and to give God glory and honor? Something to be thankful for. To know that God can do anything in your life but fail you. In that verse, it's talking about they took their lamps and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. Do you know what the represent, representing of lamps mean? Let your light, let people know that you are who you are and what you believe in. I know people that claim to be saved but never open their mouth to give God any praise, glory, honor, testimony or anything and I wonder what did they get saved from? My God. My God. When God saved me, he, I, I heard a song today. I was watching Russ Taff on, on um, Facebook uh, listening to some gospel music while I was getting ready for church. And he was giving his story of how in the last 10 years, he'd been singing for 41 years, but in the last 10 years, he broke down and cried. He cried on, on stage at this church about how that he, every time he was about how what he did, the awards he got and so forth. And some just, just totally rebuked him to the point he repented and he said, God, he said, I need you. And he always asked God when he'd go out on that stage, he said, I want to know, Lord, are you with me? Amen. And he would never go out and sing until he felt that presence of God. Amen. And I know and I've heard testimonies of men and women of God that claimed that there were certain things that had to happen when they go to go preach. Or Roberts had to have his hand burning. His one hand had to be on fire or he wouldn't even go on the stage or go out and preach. Reverend Jenkins would never go out there until God would show him lights over top of people's heads of people that he was going to pray for or if he was going to go to another city showing someone that was going to be there that he was going to pray for. And several others had uh, situations like that. Well, in this scripture it says... They, the kingdom of God, they took their lamps and went forth to meet who? The bridegroom. We know who that is, don't we? Then it goes on, it says, 
Five of them were wise and five were foolish. He's not talking about the people that are not saved. He's not talking about the people that are in the world. He's talking about people that got saved. And that they are the ones that God is preparing for this end time. It says, The foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. But the wise took the oil in their vessels with their lamps. You ever seen an oil lamp? You have to have oil in order to make it light up. You have to have the oil, the Spirit of God, in, for, in order for you to light up so that people can recognize Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, God is the same God in the days of the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s when the great tent revivals moved through the land. And, and so help me God, I don't care if any one of you believe this or not, a ten revivals coming back and they're going to be bigger than they were back then because people are sick and tired of this watered down garbage in churches. The world is so churchy and the churches got so worldly. They'll let anything come in and they'll let anything to get up there and praise God, supposedly, and it ain't got nothing to do with God. I watched some of those. They gave these awards out last night and I couldn't even clap. I'm sitting there and people's looking around. I ain't clapping because I didn't feel nothing. Rap. I don't hear nothing in rap and opera. Those two things I cannot stand. Sorry. If it doesn't worship God, it doesn't praise God, it doesn't have the Spirit of God, it doesn't move me. I got one amen. I'm going to stick on this side. Y'all dead. <laughs> dead on the door now. Thank you, Jeanette. Jean <laughs> but the ones that took the, the oil in their lamp, the wise ones, what happened was the bridegroom tarried. That means he's waiting. for, and, and they slumbered. And they slept. The church is sleeping today. Do you understand this? The church is asleep. They cannot see what's coming down the road because their nose is stuck in TV and their games and everything else and they can't see the handwriting on the wall. Anybody know who Perry Stone is? Anybody know who he is? Perry Stone posted something on Facebook yesterday. They are posting now that a hundred members of the Senate, Congress, supports a bill to outlaw churches to mis uh, minister and say anything about gay people and their lifestyle. A sin is a sin, and I don't care what the government says. God, He loves the sinner, but He hates the sin. So that tells me that if I'm a sinner, He loves me, but I have to get rid of the sin. In order for me to get rid of the sin, i got to repent. i got to change. And repent means to turn away from the wicked way. The bridegroom's tearing. He's waiting. He's, they're slumbering. They're sleeping. And the men, at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. There's a cry that's supposed to be in every church today. Not talking about how to prosper. Not talking how to feel good. But talking how to get yourself ready for the coming of the Lord for it is at hand. Well, I've heard that all my life. Well, you ain't going to hear it much longer because he's going to come and gone and you're going to still be standing here wondering. He don't change. We do. I went back and I was, I was asking God this morning, sitting on the edge of my bed, I want to go back and I want to get back to that fire that I once had. I want to get back to that feeling that I felt that I know that when I go to minister to somebody, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or I preach to a whole crowd, it doesn't make no difference. But it's the anointing and it's the Holy Ghost that's ministered, not me, the Holy Ghost. And if you saturate yourself with the Word, you get that Word deep enough down inside of you that when you open your mouth, there'll be people standing around listening and you'd be surprised how much they're absorbing. They're like a sponge. 
I don't know about you, but I love to feel that anointing. I love to hear a man or woman of God that's anointed of God and hear the Word coming through them. Because if you have the Spirit of God, and I have the Spirit of God, and I'm preaching, your Spirit and my Spirit bears witness. And when it bears witness, it'll allow you to receive whatever you're asking God for. Yes, I know this lady that's brought here because of you is in dire need of a miracle. God is a miracle worker. There ain't nothing impossible with God. I've seen God open the blind eyes. I've seen God raise the dead. I've seen God puke, puke up cancers. I, I know God that for me. If you're coming to try to get me to doubt it, you come too far and too late. I don't. I'm not the healer anyhow. I can't help it. But I can tell you who can. And I can put you on the right path of the one that can do it. It's up to you to receive it. It's up to you to believe it. It's up to you to claim it. If you don't receive it, it's not my fault. Well, I seen you pray for somebody and they didn't get healed. Right, I didn't do it. And the odds one so you blame God. Don't blame me. My God. Did you ever stop to realize that if God does heal somebody, it might be because there's something on the inside that needs to be changed in order for them to receive what was promised. Do you believe that God wants to bless everybody in here today? Do you believe that? Do you believe that God wants to heal everybody in here today that needs it? Do you believe that? Do you believe that God wants to save everybody that needs to be saved today? Do you believe that God wants to get us back on track and get us on fire for God so that we can do what God wants us to do? The only thing that can fail. He can't fail you. You fail Him. I fail Him. And we do it on a day-to-day -day basis. We might get up in the morning and forget to thank God. we got eyes to see and we can talk and hear and walk. We might forget to tell God, thank you for the food that I have on my table or the gas I got in my car or my gas or my insurance. There's a lot of grateful things you can thank God for today. It goes on to say, at midnight there was a cry. I remember hearing this over and over and over and over through the years. Jesus could come at any time. Jesus is coming at any time. Jesus is coming at any time. But you're not hearing people say it no more. You know why? Because they're getting lukewarm and they're getting on that other side of that fence and staying on instead of staying on fire for God. Set me on fire. Let that Holy Ghost fire come forth. The Bible tells you that that Holy Ghost, when it comes in, it comes in like a flood. And it will come in and it will embed within you. And it will stir you up. It will wake you up in the middle of the night. And maybe get up in the middle of the night and you'll be speaking in tongues. It's a sad thing when you can go to a church and believe in speaking in tongues. And, and everybody's ashamed to speak it. It's a shame. If you understand what that gift is and what you have inside of you when you get it, it's it talks directly to God, the throne. It goes directly to God. Well, I don't understand what they're saying. It ain't none of your business. You're not talking to God. They are. Well, if you have the Holy Ghost, the next thing you look for is the understanding, the interpretation of what you're saying to God. Do you know before the coming of the Lord can come, God is going to raise up the prophets, not a whole bunch, but he's going to raise up the prophets to usher in. Because God said he won't do one thing unless he warns the prophets to warn the people. So we have to have prophets. Not prophesied. Prophets. What is your name? And how old are you? I'm 36. 36? You don't look 36. <laughs> well, I figure you're in the 20s. Are you married? You have any children? How many children? Five. Five. Yeah, I have five kids. Five and, kids. Um, a grandson. And a grandson. Yeah. And where do you go to church? 
Um, I don't have a church yet. Oh. I used to, well, I used to go to Vineyard, but like I do like a, every once a month, um, Friday or something like that, but I don't have a church. Well, you're welcome here. Okay. Okay. You know, when I heard you get up to testify, you know what the Spirit was telling me? Uh-huh. You have a talent that you're not using. That's right. Uh-huh. Amen. That's right. And if I had your talent, they would be paying me. <laughs> you know how much I get to sing? Nothing. Oh. I got $3 and Rudy took my $3. <laughs> they paid me $7 not to sing. <laughs> am I telling you the truth? Yeah. That's how good I am. But you have a talent that you're not using and God wants to stir that up within you. That is one of them. Oh, I know it is. How did I know? I know, right? I saw it when you opened your mouth. I saw the musical, what do you call them, notes coming out of there. And I know that when you sing, you sing with a conviction. With an anointing, not just because you know how to sing or went to learn how to sing. You sing with an anointing, and that makes the difference in your life. I'm going to look back 13 years as a number that just hit me. That something happened in your life that was a hurt, a devastation in your life. And it's been a blockage of you coming out of a shell that God can use you and transform you into what he called you to do. You have a calling on your life and you're not living up to your calling because nobody has opened the door and allowed you to come forth. But you're gonna come forth starting this very day. If I never see you again, it will not stop what God's getting ready to do in your life. And I wanna tell you this as as a man of God standing before you, that if nobody today told you they love you, I do. Do you hear me? You are loved. Napkin. Napkin. Everything that I just told you, is this the truth 100%? I've never talked to you before. No. I know nothing about you. No. It had to be God. It is. Thank you so much. Do you all know her? That's my niece. That's your niece. Yep. Now she comes to my church. You never told me nothing, right? No, sir. That's your sister. Come here, honey. Do what? She's going to today. Amen. But you know what? You're wanting the best for her and there's the best for you too. God's not short in giving his blessings out. All it takes is a receiving person to receive his blessing. And what's your name, honey? Karen. Karen. And your name again? Carmel. Carmel. And how old are you, ma'am? 38. <laughs> Get out of here. Shut the back door. He's waiting on you. He There's a song, he was there all the time, waiting in line. Yes, he is. It's up to you to make that decision. 
Now, I didn't say, ask you a question and didn't ask you a question, but God just spoke to me and told me there was a time that you were thinking of committing suicide. And if it would not have been, if it would not have been that God has placed an angel beside you to watch over you, you would have easily taken your life. You're hanging around with some people that's bad news. Trust me. And if you'll make this vow today and live for it. You see this lady back here on the back row, the blonde haired lady, got her hand up. You see this man up here? That's her husband. Both of them had stage four cancer. But they served God and God brought them through the storm. And God made a change in their life. But she has a saying that she says quite frequently. When the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. You hear me? Because your future is heaven bound. His is going to hell. And he's, all he's doing is playing an interference in your lives to keep you from receiving the blessings of God. I also see you with a, a pen and a paper in your hand writing songs. They come to you. You need to put pen to paper. Date it. Sing it. Because you will be healed of hurt and pain because of the songs that God relates in your spirit to put pen to paper. That's how some of these awesome songs got there is people were in tragedies, sorrows, heartaches, pain, and they put pen to paper and that's what happened. I want you to raise your hands, honey. That's Methodist. That's Methodist. You have to get Pentecostal. You had to reach up there and grab that blessing. Now, if this hand was down here, bring it down, leave that one up. Which one would catch the blessing first? All right. <laughs> Will you sing me a song? Huh? I'm, 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 well, you can look back at the wall.